hello welcome to this video this is a quick unboxing and just a look at the quality of this dash cam for in a car uh, it's made by Lanka it's come from Amazon and it was about 20 pounds so it's supposedly a 1080p camera uh, I doubt it's actually going to be decent quality 1080p but I guess we'll find that out when we try it out so this is the blue version purely because that was the cheapest one on there they had a blue option and two black options, but the black options came with SD cards. And uh, it's a little thing, it's, it's got a few features here. It's got a 140 degree wide angle lens, supposedly. Loop recording function, so it records an amount of time. And then when, that, when the card is full, it then overwrites from the last file. And just keeps going round and round and round. Uh, it records in 1080p full HD, apparently. G sensor, which I think is some sort of, um, if you have a collision or a sudden stop, or that it shakes quite violently all of a sudden. I think you can set the sensitivity though. Uh, it records and locks that clip, uh, so you don't lose it. It doesn't overwrite it. It's got auto on and off functionality, and it's apparently got a HDMI video output, but I'm not quite sure what you would use that for in a car. No idea. Uh, around here on the back we've got a bit more information it's got a 2.31 inch high definition display it's it's FHD which I presume is supposed to mean full HD 1920 by 1080 I seriously think it's going to be upscaled from 480 or 720 it records videos in AVI video format so it uses AVI .avi files maximum picture's resolution is 12 meg so I'm presuming that means 12 megapixels uh, photo format JPEG. I'm not quite sure why you take photos with it, but there you go. It says TF card, which I'm pretty sure is actually a micro SD. Uh, that supports 4 to 32 gig apparently, but then some places say it supports 64, so I've read. Night vision function is supported. Uh, microphone and speaker is internal. The power interface, it requires 5 volts DC and a 1 amp power supply. And it's got a built-in battery, which I think is only a small one from what it says on Amazon. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Let's slide this thing out of the packaging and have a see what we've got inside. Let's uh, pull this out. It's actually quite a nice box for um, a cheaper Chinese product. Uh, there's like a slit here with nothing in it. Not quite sure what's supposed to be there. This is the camera itself. Put that to one side and have a look what else is in here. So many sections to the box. Okay, so we've got some fuses. They'll be to replace the fuse inside of the cigarette lighter plug, if that blows. We've got a suction holder thing from the window screen. We've got a charger for in the car, which goes to the mini USB plug. It's just like a generic power supply, it doesn't really say anything on it. It's actually got a rating on it here, which is... 12 volt DC, 5 volt DC at 1 amp. Then we've also got a general standard USB cable. We've got a guide slash manual, which actually seems to show you quite a lot. So there's quite a lot of information provided here, and it's all in English. There is two pages full. So it may be worth getting to know it with this first. I'm not going to do that on camera. These fuses that have supplied are 3 amp fuses. 250 volts, 3 amps. And this is the camera itself. Let's get that out. There we go. Full HD card, DVR 1080p. It's got a protective cover over the camera lens. See a little night vision LED here, then uh, around the back. Oh, yep, around the back. On the screen, we've got a little sticker that, that's stamped with a Chinese logo, and it says zero twelve. So that must be maybe their testing or quality control or something. It's got four buttons. We've got OK, up, down, and then that is a warning sign. There's a button here that's marked P, which I presume is for when it's, the car's packed up, you press that or something. 
And that looks kind of like there would be an infrared remote uh, receiver there. Underneath this cover. Maybe there is. Maybe that's a different model. I don't know. So on the side here, the connections we've got are a USB socket. An AV out, I would presume that is. So that's probably a composite video. A HDMI output. This is a mini HDMI, a small size one, not a standard one. There's nothing on that side there. Apart from the microphone, I would say. Yep, there's the microphone. On this side here, we've got a M button. Which not something to do with the memory card. There's the SD card slot, or TF as it says. Pretty sure it's micro SD. I have got a micro SD card here for it, because I didn't think it came with one. And then we've got a power button. There's a little clip on the top here, where it'll mount into the holder. And that's pretty much it for the actual camera. So this is the mount. It's got a protective plastic thing over the sticker as well. And this is just going to go into here. I I'll just push in. Yep, quite a snug tight fit. It's not going to come out of there very easily. And it does move all the way around. Then you can tighten this up when it's in position. And it won't move. And then there's also this sort of clip thing here. I'm not quite sure what this one does. That's probably for sticking it. Yeah, when you push this up, it sticks it to the window screen. So you put that on flat and then pull that. And it will suck on. So, there we go. Let's uh, pull this back off. Put this to one side. I'm going to throw all of this out of the way. I'm going to use the car charger to try this out. And a battery. Just bear with me a second. Okay. So it came up on the screen. It's just disappeared, but it did say no insert SD card. Which means there's no SD card in there. So we're going to have to turn this off and put one in. This is where we find out if it is the micro SD. Because I've got this SanDisk one here. I think it was a 32 gig I ordered. But we're about to find out. I believe 32 gig is good for about 90 minutes recording on this thing at the best quality it does. Okay, so it was a 32 gig of micro SD I ordered. And it goes in. Looking at the picture, that way. It won't quite clip in. I haven't really got a nail or anything to push it in. There we go. Yep, so it is in fact micro SD. It is clicked in now. I just needed something to push it in that little bit more. So let's plug it back in. But first I'll take this uh, cover off the lens. It's probably not helping things. May as well leave the screen protector cover on. Okay. So it does turn itself on when it's plugged into power. Excuse this stand, this is on the screen protector cover. It's now recording. So we can see there's a little uh, counter in the top corner here. 7, 8, 9. It says 1080p FHD, and there's a few logos on the side here, and now I'm going to read up a bit more on this, and uh, have a see what does what. But, let's put something in front of it and have a look what the quality's like. Okay, so this is... Just uh, the box of the memory card that I've got in front of it. It seems to pick up the text okay here. I mean, everything looks alright on it. It's hard to judge on a display like this what it will look like when you blow it up on a computer or something. I will include some proper footage from this, but there is a lot of shift on the screen. You can see as you're looking at it from a different angle, the colours do quite badly shift off. I mean, like, it's all blue when you look at it top down. So yeah, but I mean you're not going to be looking at this when you're driving along anyway. So I'm going to uh, have a play around with some of the settings and see what we can do. 
Okay, so I definitely recommend you do read the instruction manual that comes with this thing because the buttons have got quite a few different features. Uh, now I'll just quickly go through a couple of the ones that I deem as the most important on this. Um, also, just to clarify, that LED that I thought was for night vision there is actually not. If you have it, it's in standby mode now so it's not recording and it's in video camera mode, you can see the logo here. If you press um, the power button just once, whilst it's in camera mode or video camera mode, it turns on as a torch. So, I guess that's something. Not that I found that very useful, that's probably never going to be used. Um, the other function that the, main, that the power button has is obviously if you turn it off, you hold it down and it shuts off. You can press it, hold it down, and it'll come back on again. So th that's uh, basically all the power button does. This one here, the M, is not for memory card, it's for menu. So you press that once. Oh, it's actually recording. Uh, to stop a recording, you simply press the OK button. You can see it's stopped recording now. Uh, yeah, if you press the menu button, when you're not recording, it'll open up the this one here is the video camera menu, you use the up and down arrows to navigate through it to go into something you would press OK and to come back out without doing anything you press the mode so the M button and that'll back out when you're at the first menu if you press the menu button again it will switch over to more settings here and I recommend you go through and set these up for whatever that you are going to want them to be set to especially time and date because the time and date was wrong on the one I've got okay the little P up here indicates park mode when it's in park mode you can set it up so uh, the motion sensor when the device shakes it will record a short clip of about 20 seconds or so lock that file to the card and then stop so that's if uh, someone hit your car or something for example it would shake register and the camera would record it you can turn that on and off with this little P button you see that the P goes away so don't have that on when you drive in otherwise it will just not loop record properly but you can put that on when you stopped if you want to use that feature uh, there's also to cycle through the modes obviously it's in video mode now you press this button here and now you can see a camera's there now it's working as an actual photo camera I personally wouldn't ever use something like this for that, I mean we've all got, got camera phones for that kind of thing. You press this again, and it now cycles into playback. So to play back a video you can press this OK button. You can turn the volume up and down using these arrows. So you can pause it by pressing OK, play and pause. To fast forward, you hold these buttons down. It's going minus two. And the other way around. Oh, it's only a short video file, so it's we do that way. That's times two. So that's forward two times, backwards two times. Uh, to delete a video file when you're in the playback window, if you press the menu button, it'll give you an option to delete or protect it. If you protect it, it stops the camera from automatically overwriting it. And if you delete it, it well deletes it off the card. So you can use the arrows and select that. You've got quite a few options here, so press OK. You can delete the current file, or you can delete all files off the card. I'm just going to delete current, but there is only one on air anyway. Ask you to confirm it, OK. No files. So to get out of playback mode, you press this button again. And it takes you back into video camera recording mode. The next thing that I've found, which is probably one of the other useful features, is when it's recording, so you press OK to start it recording. So this is now recording as it would be doing as you'd be driving along and whatever. If you press this warning symbol in this corner, it will lock the current video file to the SD card to prevent it being overwrote. So that's like a quick lock button. So if something happens and you want to save that clip for later, you can press that and it locks the video file. You can see the keys come up here. I've got this set to record in 5 minute segments. Okay, so if you do use that feature and the recording gets locked or something happens and it locks one of the recordings to the device, you can literally go, press this to go to camera mode, press this again to go to video mode, 
you can see this says lock. It's named the file lock because this file is locked and it won't overwrite it. So now if I stop this and I want to delete it, so I go into the menu, delete, delete current, OK, protected. It won't let us delete it. So you have to go to protect, unlock current, and select OK. Then you can go, you, you will notice here it says movie again. So now you go in here, delete, delete current, OK. And that's how you do that. So anyway, that's a quick look through the features. I'm going to go and uh, install this thing. And then we'll have to take some video footage off it and have a see what it's like. So the next bit of footage you'll see will probably be from the camera itself, from in the vehicle. This voiceover that I'm doing now is whilst I'm editing the video. I've had the camera in the car now for a good month, month and a half, something like that. And I've got quite a few clips, daytime, nighttime. Uh, I've even got some clips of some idiot drivers and stupid people in the middle of the road, which I'll throw in here as well, I guess. But um, all in all, the verdict is it's quite a good camera. The picture quality isn't the best in the world, but it is more than adequate for what you need to see nine times out of ten. Uh, daytime, it's excellent. The picture's really clear. You can blow it up quite large and uh, it, it doesn't really go too pixely. You can capture a lot of detail and it can record for anywhere depending on whether it's daytime or nighttime and how much sort of colour and actions going on in the video you can get about an hour and a half up to three hours worth of recording time on the card that's with the 32 gigabyte micro SD card that I'm using. Now the built-in audio isn't the best in the world. I'll include a short clip, but it picks up lots of noise and vibration, at least in my case. But you're probably not going to need the audio for most things anyway. As you go higher speed, the noise does get worse. So here's a clip of it going at about 60, 70 miles an hour down a motorway. And uh, it's pretty bad. That's why I've cut all of the audio out of all of these clips. So as you can hear it, it's not the best audio wise. Video wise, towards the darker times going to night, it sort of automatically adjusts the contrast and exposure and stuff itself to an extent now you can manually adjust the exposure to make nighttime better so everything's clearer but if you adjust it too much it completely washes out the daytime picture and the quality is pretty bad then now if you're in areas with street lighting floodlights traffic lights stuff like that it's not too bad it's still quite clear in those kind of areas now it's when you're down sort of back lanes bits of the motorway with no lights that it really does start to take a hit on the quality and suffer it's still not too bad. I mean, you can still make out if someone does something stupid in front of you in a car. You can see what they've done. You can't really make out the plates um, from distance or at night time, obviously because of the lack of light. But as I say, city centre driving and busier built-up areas where the streets are actually lit is not too bad at all. Of course, at this price point, which this camera costs, which you're looking at around about £20 on average, then it is really good value for money I mean you get a good picture and it does what it says on the tin it works and it lasts I've had this camera running now all the time it starts when the ignition's turned on because the cigarette light is switched and stops when you turn the ignition off when the power goes off to it so I don't I've literally not had to touch it apart from when something's happened and I've had to copy the file off which has only been about three four clips I've had to copy off it and that's just for putting things on Facebook going oh look at this stupid driver here I may actually start putting them onto YouTube as well just so everyone can uh, see how stupid some people are but overall yeah I'm uh, pretty happy with the purchase I may look to invest in a more expensive more I don't want to say more featured but a better nighttime video quality one because that's really where this is lacking but night vision is quite a struggle for a lot of things. And it is colour night vision as well. A lot of cameras tend to be black and white for night vision and use uh, infrared LEDs. 
but no, th this does a good job overall. If you're looking at purchasing a dash cam just for average use, most people are going to be really happy with this. And uh, I'd, I'd recommend it, yeah. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please subscribe for future videos. I may well do some more dash cam videos. If anyone can recommend any decent dash cams um, that obviously aren't going to break the bank, I'm not looking to spend big money. But ones with decent night vision, I may well try one of them out, put it on a, a test run and, and have a see. But anyway, until the next video, thanks for watching.